Hello viewers. Welcome to AR Strive. The purpose of this channel is to provide education using different techniques. If everyone is well aware of the COVID-19 and the whole world is advised to stay at home, AR Strive brings you the opportunity to learn from this platform. So subscribe to this channel and share the video with others. Let's start. Economics is greatly impacted by how well information travels through society. Today, social media giants Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are major forces on the information superhighway. Decisions. Decisions in the social media age. To post or not to post, every day we are faced with a myriad of decisions from what to have for breakfast to which route to take to the class to the more complex. Should I double major and add possibly another semester of study to my education? Our response to these choices depend on the information we have available at any given moment. Inform uh, economists call information imperfect because we rarely have all the data we need to make perfect decisions. Despite the lack of perfect information, we still make hundreds of decisions a day. And now we have another avenue in which to gather information. Social media. Outlets like Facebook and Twitter are altering the process by which we make choices. How we spend our time, which movies we see, which products we buy, and more. How many of you chose a university without checking out its Facebook page or Twitter stream for information and feedback? You will see in this course what happens when economics is affected by how well and how fast information is disseminated through society, such as how quickly information travels through Facebook. Economists love nothing but better than deep and liquid markets operate under conditions of perfect information. Here you will learn about what is economics and why is it important? Microeconomics and macroeconomics. How economists use theories and models to understand economic issues. How economies can be organized and overview of economic systems. What is economics and why should you spend your time learning it? After all, there are other disciplines you could be studying and other ways you could be spending your time. As we have the bring it home feature just mentioned, making choices is at the heart of what economists study. And your decision to take this course is as much as economic decision as anything else. Economics is probably not what you, what you think. It is not primarily about money or finance. It is not primarily about business. It is not mathematics either. What is it then? It is both a subject area and a way of viewing the world. Economics is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. These can be individual decisions, family decisions, business decisions, or societal decisions. If you look around carefully, you will see that scarcity is a fact of life. Scarcity means that human wants for goods, services, and resources exceed what is available. Resources such as labor, tools, land, and raw material are necessary to produce the goods and services we want to buy and they exist in limited supply. Of course, the ultimate scarce resource is time. Everyone, rich or poor, have just 24 hours in the day to try to acquire the goods they want. At any point in time, there is only a finite amount of resources available. If you still do not believe that scarcity is a problem, consider the following. Does everyone need food to eat? Does everyone need a decent place to live? Does everyone have access to health care? In every country in the world, there are people who are hungry, homeless, for example, those who call park benches their beds, and in, the, and in need of health care, just to focus on a few critical goods and services. Why is this the case? It is because of scarcity. Let's delve into the concept of scarcity a little deeper because it is crucial to understanding economics. The problem of scarcity. Think about all the things you consume food, shelter, clothing, transportation, healthcare, and entertainment. How do you acquire those items? You do not produce them yourself. You buy them. How do you afford the things you buy? You 
work for pay or if you do not someone else does it on your behalf yet most of us never have enough to buy all the things we want this is book of scarcity for how do we fall for it every society at every level must make choices about how to use its resources families must decide whether to spend their money on a new car or fancy vacation towns must choose whether to put more of the budget into police and fire protection or into the school system nations must decide whether to devote more funds to the national defense or to protecting the environment in most cases there just isn't enough money in the budget to do everything so why do we need why do we not each just produce all of the things we consume The simple answer is most of us do not know how but that is not the main reason. When you study economics you will discover that the obvious choice is not always the right answer or at least the complete answer. Studying economics teaches you to think in a different way. Think back to pioneer days when individuals knew how to do so much more than we do today. From building their homes to growing their crops to hunting for food to repairing the equipment most of us do not know how to do all or any of those things it is not because we could not learn rather we do not have to the reason why is something called the division and specialization of labor a production innovation that was first put forth by adam smith adam smith introduced the idea of dividing labor into discrete tasks the division and specialization of labor the formal study of economics began when adam smith published his famous book the wealth of nations in 1776 many authors had written on economics in the centuries before smith but he was the first to address the subject in a comprehensive way in the first chapter smith introduces the division of labor which means that the way a good or service is produced is divided into a number of tasks that are performed by different workers instead of all the tasks being done by the same person to illustrate the division of labor smith counted how many tasks went into making a pen drawing out a piece of wire cutting it into the right length straightening it putting a head on one end and a point on the other and packaging pen for sale to name just a few smith counted 18 distinct tasks that were often done by different people all for a pen believe it or not modern business divide tasks as well even a relatively simple business like restaurant divides up the task of serving meals into a range of jobs like top chef south chef less skilled kitchen help servers to wait on the table a greeter at the door janitors to clean up and a business manager to handle paychecks and bills not to mention the economic connections a restaurant has with suppliers of food furniture kitchen equipment and the building where it is located a complex business like a large manufacturing factory such as the shoe factory or a hospital can have hundreds of job classifications Division of labor in previous production. When the tasks involved with producing a good or service are divided and subdivided, workers and businesses can produce a greater quantity of output. In his observations of pin factories, Smith observed that one worker alone might make 20 pins in a day, but that a small business of 10 workers, some of whom would need to do uh, two or three of the 18 tasks involved with the pin making. could make 48000 pins in a day how can a group of workers each specializing in a different task produce so much more than the same number of workers who try to produce the entire good or service by themselves smith offered three reasons first specialization in a particular small job allows workers to focus on the parts of the production process where they have an advantage people have different skills talents and interests for they will be better at some jobs than the others 
the particular advantages may be based on educational choices which are in turn shaped by interest in talents only those with medical degrees qualify to become doctors for instance for some good specialization will be affected by geography it is easier to be a wheat farmer in north dakota than in florida but easier to run a tourist hotel in florida than in north dakota if you live in or near a big city it is easier to attract enough customers to operate a successful dry cleaning business or move or movie theater if you live in a sparsely populated rural area whatever the reason if people specialize in the production of what they do best they will be more productive than if they produce a combination of things some of which they are good at and some of which they are not second workers who specialize in certain tasks often learn to produce more quickly and with higher quality this pattern holds true for many workers including assembly line laborers who build cars stylists who cut hair and doctors who perform heart surgery in fact specialized workers often know their jobs well enough to suggest innovative ways to do their work faster and better a similar pattern often operates within businesses in many cases a business that focuses on one or a few products sometimes call its core competency is more successful than firms that try to make a wide range of products third specialization allows businesses to take advantage of economies of scale which means that for many goods if the level of production increases the average cost of producing each individual unit declines for example if a factory produces only 100 cars per year each car will be quite expensive to make on average however if a factory produces 50000 cars each year then it can set up an assembly line with the huge machines and workers performing specialized tasks and the average cost of production per car will be lower the ultimate result of workers who can focus on their preferences and talents learn to do their specialized jobs better and work in a large organization if the society as a whole can produce and consume far more than if each person tried to produce all of their goods and services the division and specialization of labor have been a force against the problem of scarcity by the end of this section you are able to discuss the importance of studying economics explain the relationship between production and division of labor evaluate the significance of scarcity now that we have gotten an overview on what economic studies let's quickly discuss why you are right to study it economics is not primarily a collection of facts to be memorized through though there are plenty of important concepts to be learned instead economics is better thought of as a collection of questions to be answered or puzzles to be worked out most important economics provides the tools to work out these puzzles let's answer some questions what is scarcity can you think of two causes of scarcity answer question number 2 Consultant works for two hundred dollars per hour. She likes to eat vegetables, but is not very good at growing them. Why does it make more economic sense for her to spend her time at the consulting job and shop for her vegetables? Question number three: A computer system engineer could paint his house, but it makes more sense for him to hire a painter to do it. Explain why. I hope the concept of scarcity and division of labor is clear to you. To know the answers of the questions that I have put, you should f- subscribe to this channel and look for the next video.